All right. So thanks everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Phil Bossman. Um, uh, this is going to be talking about how to tame the event log dog, bah, beast, if you want to call it that. So the idea, you know, somebody just before us, um, Mike talked about, you know, using the event log to do some other stuff and then passing it on to uh, some other orchestrations. So this is kind of in that same vein, um, but this is just a different spin on that kind of thing. Wow, we're moving. Um, certainly want to thank our sponsors, of course. You know, I like a bunch of these products. They're good people. Pure storage, patch my PC, chocolatey, Manning. I bought a book from the Manning, so that was good. So, because you can always use another, another PowerShell book. So, who I am? My name is Phil Bossman. Um, I am a PowerShell enthusiast. I've been doing it for since the Monad days. Um, I, my world is EUC. And for those who don't know, EUC is end user computing, meaning Citrix, VMware, a bunch of that stuff, VDI, um, desktop OS, that kind of stuff. That's my world. That's the world I live in. So I work in operations side. And now we're moving into cloud and Azure. And uh, I'm a part time hiker. And oh, Research Triangle PowerShell user group. So shameless plug. Certainly join us twice a month, first and one, last, first and third Wednesday of the month. So what are we going to talk about? The agenda of this talk is last year I gave a talk on using get when event, basically using PowerShell to manage the event logs and, and kind of do a bunch of things with the event logs. I'm going to quickly talk about that, but then we're going to expand upon that and actually talk about XML because XML is running all of, it's underneath the covers. So the event log is just driven by event, data-driven XML format, okay? We're gonna talk about WEF and WEC, Windows event log forwarding, Windows event log collectors. Then we're gonna talk about event triggers and then what you can do with it. And it's something that's not, I don't see very much documentation on, so that we're just gonna talk about that as well. So quick primer, I'm just gonna go really through, quick, through this slide really quickly. You see online a bunch of stuff, hey, get my win events from system logs and just give me the first five, right? That kind of thing. So very quickly, there's also multiple ways in which to query the event logs. I can do it just by a straight up name. I can say, give me a hash table. So hey, we can, we're in PowerShell, we understand what hash tables are. So we can give it name value pairs and say, hey, give me the, the log name is my system. Again, I want anything with ID number one, but hey, we can still do, you know, give me the first five. So you see a lot of these examples around. Um, you may also see in um, some documentation, um, XPath. Some people like it. Some people don't like it, but I'm really kind of pointing out some of the things that you'll typically see online and other places which you can be. And um, let's go, event logs, here we are. So what is XPath and a bunch of stuff? So when we're playing with uh, event logs, everybody's pretty familiar with the, the GUI version of the event viewer, right? Here we're on this in this form, so we can, hey, click the things we're looking for, we want, uh, 4624 events, and then go find those events and it filters from there. All right, so we're pretty familiar with that, but not, not everybody you know, understands that, hey, there's this other thing here called XML, and right in here, is this is the XPath. All right, so XPath is a XML type searcher, so you can search XML documents using XPath. So full stop there. Just that's where it's come. That's where it comes from. So if you're looking for how to build this kind of thing, and you actually, you're quickly back, saying, "Hey, I want error window warnings," and that's the levels, and then it's this whole thing created system time. That's all based upon the number of ticks around. So next part is XML is your friend, and I point this out. XML is definitely your friend because everything rides underneath it. And so if you understand, as we just saw before, is I can come in here and manually edit this XML and say I want level three instead of two. And I'm going to get that as well. Actually, we said this event ID. We're going to remove this event ID from here. Uh, did I just screw up the gear? There, now it should finish. And it's invalid because I messed it up. But it doesn't really matter because I don't really care. We're going to come back to the filter, uncheck yes, and then let it build me for from here, right? So now I can go back here, it builds my, my XML for me. Point is, it's XML at that point, right? There's a bunch of XML, we're passing it in, this is the event log viewer is, is doing that work. You can do XML from here. And so you can clearly, clearly see, hey, there's an XML list, and then each entry for the XML query saying, hey, 
I'm gonna, the path I'm looking for, actually the, the event log uh, folder on the left is called the path. And then, hey, we're gonna select from this path, star, and then close the select. So it's pretty straightforward on what you can do. You can take that entire, the reason I, I'm kind of pointing this out and putting in a separate variable is that I don't feel like a lot of people understand that it's just a random piece of text. And you can see here, I'm putting, I, there's a at symbol, put the quote, quote at symbol, just a here string. You can make it whatever you want. Meaning the whole point is it can be dynamic. I can throw variables in here, I can dynamically create it, I can write whatever kind of code, I'm just generating this block of XML. I don't really care what it is, right? I guess I do care what it is, but I care enough that I can do a bunch of stuff with it, right? And so in this, fa in this particular fashion, I actually parameterize the, the event path itself and the event ID, so I can loop this multiple times, I can pass in a variable, I can create this into a function and have it go get me the pieces I'm looking for, so you can do all that stuff. Point that out, because we're gonna use it later. We're gonna use this concept of, of it being XML, right? And so you can just saw, we understand this is PowerShell, we work things at scale, meaning that if I do it to one computer, I should be able to do 10 computers. I should be able to do it to 10,000 computers, right? And now we can play this game of filtering left and how often we should be doing things. Um, in the first case, I'm gonna say, hey, go get the win event from all of those computers in AD. All right, I can, but then we have this problem of, hey, which computers are on, which ones are talking, which ones are not talking, we have that problem. And the second example here is you can do the reverse and say, I have my list, just run the win event multiple times. So it's whether you're filtering left, filtering right, you run the command once, you run it back the other way. So it's a different variation on how some things go. Uh, where did they go? Oh, extra slide. So we, 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 we talk quickly at scale, this idea of potentially if you, I can do all this work to a bunch of machines, but then the question is, well, what happens to the machine that's out there and it just happens to be off? or somebody messed it up, and, or it's just in the middle of a reboot. That's, that's typically a problem, and now you're gonna sit there waiting, 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 try to get these events going here. So that's where there comes this concept of event collectors. And we'll see events, Microsoft has this process for forwarding events away from, from where the machine is. And so there's a collector that collects them, and then there's um, a forwarder at this point. So we're gonna quickly just jump onto that one. Oh, didn't full screen. So how do we turn on a collector? Okay, so let, let, me, let me take a step back and tell the story in this fashion. So I, again, I work in the EUC space, so be it you know, virtual desktops and multiple Citrix servers that I, as far as I'm concerned are all ephemeral, right? I can turn them on, turn them off, you know, they can scale up, scale down, and I don't really care, but I also want them to be that purpose. So I don't have to add this to a collection, add this to, to other components to keep things running in, in that form. So I wanna take my event logs, right, and forward them on to somebody else and let the event log collector hold on to everything. And so then as these machines are rebooting, as these machines are, excuse me, not even rebooting, but being deleted and re-added. So hey, we have to scale up for a, bunch of, for a period and then we're gonna scale down. I don't wanna to have to be trying to actively, you know, talk to 40 machines when there's actually only two of them now because we're not on that project. And so I don't have to manage that as well. So, what, is, what happens in order to get this process to work out? With, this is the, the, the form that typically everybody sees. They come in here, use this to enable Windows event collectors. You simply come into a subscription. That is what we're gonna see in just a second as to what that really means. So event collector, you define any machine. Any machine can be a collector. And actually, it's not gonna give you this warning message, but actually on the slideshow before, you saw the little warning, hey, you just gotta turn on the service. It's not on by default, because what are you gonna be collecting? Nobody's sitting there waiting for you to collect, right? So now, in the collection, so we'll actually create a quick click, uh, subscription. The collector is actually defining subscriptions that, I'll talk about here, choo -choo -choo. subscriptions, so what is the description? Sample two, we're gonna actually do this quickly live. So, we're gonna define your subscription, define whatever you want, where do the events go? So typically we wanna put them into forwarded events. There is a couple modules that'll give you other paths and actually Michael um, talked about you know, creating those separate event logs 
the actual paths themselves, the channels that we, as we call. Um, there is an option for event collectors to actually have the collector reach out to the machines and go get them. Holy mackerel, this is loud. Um, reach out to the machines, go get them. But the, the best practice is to actually have the machines forward to me. And so it's a source initiated versus a collector initiated. And what that means is that you can define a set of computers and we're just gonna say, you know, servers. Actually, I don't think I moved servers here. I'm gonna say, yeah, just domain computers just to give me a group. So all domain computers, they're gonna, if they talk to the subscription, it's gonna say, hey, you're in my list, I want you to subscribe to some stuff, or I subscribe to a bunch of stuff. So what are you gonna subscribe to? What events are, is, is going, are being subscribed to? Well, this looks real familiar, right? We just saw this. This is the exact same format we're looking for. So you could come through here and do the GUI interface. and says, hey, give me the critical error and warning events for whatever that machine. So if the machine, uh, oh, and then we need to say what, yeah, we're just, we'll just say uncheck, we'll just say the application logs. So we only want application, critical error and warnings. That's what we want, right? And if the machine happens to check in and it's conformed to the structure, it's gonna say, give me these events. But ultimately, look, we got XML. We can actually talk to it. We can actually not talk to it. We couldn't tell it to do different things. Then there is a setting as far as um, how often you don't want to saturate the entire environment. So you can say optimize for bandwidth, meaning that it's only going to send so many events at one point in time. So it's not going to just say, hey, give me everything. It'll pull it. You can also optimize for latency, means as soon as the event comes, keep on sending. I want to see it as, as soon as possible. Or you can say, I don't want to cross the network for all that data bandwidth. I think uh, the normal is like every hour, so it won't happen immediately. So we'll go from there, and we'll go from there. So this is a collector. So how do you, now that the collector is ready and waiting to do, how do you then get the machines to actually talk to it? So we'll go into group policy, and we create, I just happened to create this group policy called WEC. I'm gonna open them all up, I'm gonna close this one. This is really all you need to do to turn it on. So there is a, in Windows components, event forwarding, yeah, my mouse moves, um, is you can set up your target subscriber manager and follow the documentation. I don't, I don't need to work through this process of following the documentation, but what do you need to do? Define HTTP, define the, um, the collector itself, how often it refreshes, and the subscriber manager, this is just in the documentation, and then um, the maximum number of events, this is just kind of best practice. Um, and also in best practice is, is the, of the network service, is the actual one doing all the work, so you need to give it access, access to the event log readers um, group on the machine, that it's actually not a requirement, but in order to read the security log, you need that. So if you're gonna be collecting security events, you need to be, you need to add this component. So it's one of those things that's not highly documented, but it will be something you need to know. So it's all running as a network service and it's the one doing all the work. So if you needed to collect those logs, it's just permissions at that point. So once you turn that on, once you do that, machines will come along and they will start sending events. And I broke this earlier because I mistyped a word and it stopped sending events. So we're, we'll work from that. We'll see what we can do from there. We're gonna come back to my presentation and... So, we talked about the collector and we have a couple samples of what we're gonna do with the collectors and event forwarding. So, with that point is that, so now I'm going to get a list of all the events from all the different machines on my machine and they're all gonna be collected in one space, right? And so, hey, that's, that's a benefit. And so as I turn off machines, they're just gonna come in and you know, send those events. And as they turn off, they'll just stop sending events. The only caveat at that point is potentially this idea of um, you may have to tweak some, do some scavenging on your event collectors. If you are using Windows event collectors, just as machines get you know, dropped off, they get fallen away. You just don't wanna, you know, uh, if you get too many, just the machine will slow down, the collector will slow down, just because it's trying to collect from devices that don't, don't exist. 
Um, the next thing I want to say, and in this form, is that the community is awesome. So mechanically, just setting up Windows Event Collectors, it's not a problem. But now, what the heck do you collect on? What are you working with? And this is where, just reach out to the community. And so there's a module for Windows Event Forwarding, and doo -doo -doo -doo. So our friend Fred, who is here, started this, and now um, Andy manages this repository. It's still pretty old, but it does exactly what I'm looking for. And the reason I'm pointing this out is this is a PowerShell um, conference. This is not the screen. Get command. There's event forwarding. This is PowerShell. This is a PowerShell um, conference. So, hey, I did all that from the GUI. Well, I can do the same thing from here. We're gonna say get web subscriptions. So this is the whole point. We can now interface with the, that module. I can build the new, new subscriptions. I can do it all directly from here. So, and it, now that I have objects, I'm gonna say the name is desktop. Come on. All right. But like PowerShell at all, as, as what it is, there's a default view and there's extra view. So we can see what, what, what's the, the style, who has access to do this, and we see this thing here. Here's this XML that we kind of played with before, right? And I keep coming back to this thing, what's this XML, what's this XML talking about, is that in this fashion, I think it's not really easy to see at this point, but it just says, from the application system and um, security event, give me all the errors, warnings, and, and informationals. So that's what this is actually saying in the XML. Again, I point out why do I want to care about all this stuff? Come on. So my other slide, the other guy, I read, I point out this. So first one is um, managing the event logs, but then I got this other guy over here, similarly Windows event logs as well, but it's by Palantir. Anybody know who Palantir is? What do they do? They're a security firm. They're the ones doing crazy stuff, but it's all security. Now I point that out because, hey, I'm an, I'm an operations guy. I don't really understand what I should be collecting, right? I come in, I go, well, maybe I wanna know that somebody's logged into the computer, somebody's not logged into the computer. But if I can follow some of what they're doing as well, they're the ones coming down and saying, hey, these are the events that I typically bring into a sim operation and all that. Well, I can use the lessons that they've learned and inject it into my stuff. And so if I was looking for you know, uh, ADFS stuff or auto runs or other things, what's happening on the machines, I can now use the queries that are defined somewhere else to gather more information from me. And so I think part of the lesson I'm trying to like, impart at this point is that use the community itself to get the pieces you're looking for. So you have all the, the tools, now it's use some of the community to put those tools back together for you. Especially, because um, I'm gonna talk about just another second. I point this out because when I was, at one point many years ago, I was trying to figure out what to do with here, but where's my code? Is that in doing that, one of the things that the security people do quite often is that, let's look at this XML. This looks kind of like what we just talked about. I have my query, query zero, security event log. Line number five says, hey, give me all the security events. But I had to go to the security, the, those guys to figure out, hey, there's this thing called suppress. So now I can tell, I can take that XML, stick it into, I can take this XML or this kind of structure and I can say, send me everything. I can tell my, my, my clients, forward me all your events, but suppress these. So the stuff that, that I know, the services, contacts, you can even scroll down further. Hey, I want all the logon events types. I want all the anybody interactive login, but I don't need that one. Why are you gonna send that one to me? That's, that's, that's the system itself. It's doing it all the time. And so um, I can't show live, but we have solar winds monitoring our environment. Every two minutes, it's checking the machine, thing, checking the machine. So it's just filling the event log continuously. Like I don't need any of that. You know, I don't need any of that real data. It can do its own thing, but I, I want to suppress the monitoring tool from showing the monitor. Like it's like it's, it's painful. 
like all of the events. And some other, like I have some other WMI events locally, like Symbios, it just keeps generating stuff completely. I don't need any of that stuff into my collector. So I, I kind of point that out. The reason I point that out is that Hey, some people say, why, do you, why are you going through all this effort for Windows event forwarding and sending to a collector? Well, I have Splunk, and I have all these other you know, event tracker, other kind of products that collect all my stuff. Well, I don't need an agent on any of this stuff. And Splunk and all that charges you by ingress. So if I'm not sending, I'm suppressing all the stuff that I definitely know I don't need, I'm reducing my ingress fee into Splunk, right? And if I can manage this effectively, I can say the, the Windows event forwarders, send it to my collector, and I put one Splunk agent on the collector, and there you go. And so now I have potentially, depending upon how your environment is, maybe three collectors, all collecting logs, do some processing, and then pass it on, right? So Splunk only exists, the, the Splunk agent is there, along with my uh, event tracker, that's what we use internally, but then I only can put it in one place. So, I can suppress the stuff that I definitely know is, is, is not in use, and I don't need, and I, don't, I can eliminate that process. Quickly point being the, I point that out because the lesson is that the security groups do this quite often, and I had to go into their world in order to get that information. So community is awesome. Feel free to reach out to other communities, and it is valuable to really see you know, even what the DBAs are doing as far as optimization and processing multiple tasks at the same time, it's always a good thing. So, WME operation, hey, things, events, the standard events that are just garbage, you don't need them. Let me come back to, let's go. All right, this will, the demo won't complete, but we're gonna talk about it because I just broke it. Truth, truth, be, truth be told. So, the reason I say that just won't work. So kind of this in this example, I'm gonna you know, move away for quickly, is that we just saw what this before is, it's just a big, big here string, right? So I can define, excuse me, that suppression and that selection in here and just run it right there from PowerShell itself. So this is valid code, right? This will run. Actually, I think it'll run. And there they all go. All right, so here's all the logins that are not just like system. On this particular system, we don't really care about that. Right, and so you can use some of those lessons, you can do it locally, and if this is the XML that I wanna run on a local machine and I don't wanna suppress, all right, well then I can just transfer it into my, I can then take this whole XML, it's kind of, I gotta copy and paste it, but this code, go back to this guy, Tell me he's collecting. No, nope, he's still not collecting. He broke it. Right? Come back here, process, change the event, come here to XML, and paste. And it will work. Done. So that is one thing. This I think this is the other one. This is the my baseline. So this is the other example. This is really that exact code, right? Just in this form. And for brevity. So and I'm still not collecting events, but that's not gonna work. Because I broke it, of course. All right, so coming on to the last part. Okay, so here we are. We're now collecting events into a single place. What the hell does that mean? Like, why do I, am I gonna do anything with it? Like, why is that valuable? Well, there is a new thing, there, not a new thing, but if you weren't aware, is that there is something called an event log trigger. Now, in the world of uh, scheduled tasks, so Windows itself has, a, has a, a potential trigger that, hey, if, you, if an event is created and it matches a part, you can actually trigger actions. Well, trigger, trigger what? I can trigger anything. I can actually call you know, some random exe, but I can just as well call PowerShell itself, right? And so the reason I point this out is I used to work for a hospital system, and uh, this is now a little quick little story. Used to work for a hospital system and we had people logging in and they kept blocking out their accounts, right? And we're spread out so far enough is that if you weren't aware too is lockout events are actually a replicated event. So if you, the 4740, 4740 will replicate to the PDC and that's where it all happens. So they all get replicated, but not the invalid login event. 
So that doesn't join, doesn't get replicated to a single place. And so, hey, the PDC knows that there was an event happened, and there wasn't a 440 on, on the DC it happened on, but how do you know which server, which computer actually failed the login? So I know it got locked, but I don't know where. So long story short, I had to figure out how to query all the DCs and figure out what computer that guy logged, they logged failed his login, so then it created a lockout. So created a Windows event collector, sent all my AD logs to a single machine. Basically, we called it AD Health. So sent everything to AD Health. He was collecting all the events. I then came in here and used an event log trigger. So when a lockout happens, it goes back and finds the last login, um, the last failed login for fast failed event for that user, and then sends an email off to the service desk. So then the service desk sits there, and they get a shared mailbox, and it's just there collecting these emails from the system. And all it says is that Bill Smith locked that computer. OK. And so then Bill calls, hey, that's the computer that, that you locked on. Or the reverse, what's actually happened more often than, than not is that they'd sit there and watch, there's Bill or Mary and Mary and Mary and Mary. And then somebody just called, hey, Mary, you got to go turn off that computer over there. right? So that was typically the scenario. So, that is one scenario. What, uh, what we do now, or I haven't implemented yet. All right, so long story short, you can take, use the Windows Event Scheduler, Task Scheduler, to actually call events. Those events can be triggered by events. And to uh, Mike's point is that you can generate those events yourself, or in this case, we can just watch the event logs themselves, right? But in, what, what does it take to actually create an event? An event itself, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom quickly, and what it looks like is to actually register a scheduled task itself. When you create a scheduled task of any kind, it needs to do a bunch of things. You gotta give it a name, of course, path on where it's gonna be, the description of what it is, then what work you're gonna do, what's the trigger, how are you gonna generate this, is it gonna be triggered on a scheduled task, on a, on a time, is it gonna be on an event, other things, what's it gonna do, and then actually the principle that it's gonna run as. So you need to define all these, and up at the top, we're gonna to define what they are. So what's the action we're gonna do? We're actually gonna call PowerShell with a bunch of variables. We're gonna say, hey, we're gonna call PowerShell. We are gonna run this, this script called alert DA, and we'll see what that is in a minute. But there's an, there is an ability to actually get the event itself. And so you have the ability to create some other variables so that I want the, the actual event ID itself, the record ID. So as the events are creating, the machine has a record ID. What computer generated it? Um, I'm gonna use user, source address, and that kind of thing. So I created some code and I can pass in variables, it doesn't really matter. We need to define who, what the principle is that we're gonna run the job as. Um, we then create any of the settings that are possible. Um, typically in this fashion, we can say, hey, don't allow to run on demand. So then this is a, you shouldn't, well in this case, well, we'll see what we're gonna do, is that you can set a whole bunch of stuff. Read the documentation, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, whether it runs hidden, whether it does not, whether it can be run while it's existing, allow to start, other bunch of stuff. Um, the, the trick at, uh, we saw here, hey, there's this thing called XML. And so in this fashion, what we were doing is looking for the login event of any user. So long as what it is, I want the login event, right? in the uh, terminal service. So I wanna see, in this fashion, this query itself, to say, tell me everywhere that the domain admin logged in, right? So if you happen to have a domain ad admin account, I want you to know that you shouldn't be logging into Windows servers or only the DC. So if you log into any particular server other than the DC, I wanna know about it, right? And so that's what this is effectively gonna do, and we'll kinda get to it. So the point is that, hey, we're gonna say interactive logins, that's the, the event we're gonna look for, but the magic too is that we can take some details out of the event. Actually, I'm not sure if I actually gave a quick example. Now I'm gonna deviate, and of course, that's always dangerous. Yeah, because it's gonna do code. Get an event. How am I doing with time? I think I'm okay. I'm gonna say like the floor. I'm gonna say out variable events. Fuck it. All right, 
So now we have a thing called events. Look at me, I already did this before. All right, so give me the first event, or second event, actually. So we kind of said this before. I didn't give, I didn't actually do some demos of this. We're gonna kind of live, like, live dangerously here. Um, so this is just what this happens, this event happens to be. I don't even know what it is, so we don't really care. But the point being is that um, the reason I'm looking at this stuff is that, where did I go? Is I want to get this these pieces out of the event itself, right? So there's the structure for event system record and I, all these other components. Well, where the heck did that come from? So we look at the event itself. Typically, see it comes into this form when you are in PowerShell as full, or you can say format list and give me all the properties. So it's going to give you the message itself, the ID all the other components. And so you will also see typically, or not typically, but you will see in code that people produce is that this thing called properties, give me properties number two, whatever that happens to be, right? And go from there. So you can do it out here. Yeah, let's do it out here. Okay. An event. I'm just going to do it here. System. Jeez. My tab complete's killing me. Max form, alligator. Sorry. Events. How's my properties? Something more I can do. Yeah, so we just get some BS data, right? And so the reason I say that is that you'll typically see in this form. Right, whether it's running or it's doing some other, it's actually looking at a service at this point, whether the service is running. So we can quickly look too. So this just happens to be service controls running. We get some portable data information, but there's some extra data in here. Kind of talked, and if you were at my last talk last year, uh, you saw me do a bunch of this other stuff, and that's kind of what we want to do. And I want to talk to it. I'm deviating, but that's okay. I think I have time. So we're gonna call it XML, and there's a mem there is a method on the event log object called, huh? Yeah, even MML. That all works. Thanks, Mike. To XML. So we can send it to a string, but we can send it to an XML. Well, like why the heck did I just spend three minutes trying to work through all that kind of stuff? Because now I have this thing called an object, an XML. So I now converted this thing, events one into an XML object, but now with this XML object, I can now say, well, get me, well, you saw, hey, it itself is an event. I want the event property. What it, hey, event property has system. System. This kind of looks familiar. It's, it becomes it's so all the properties of, it is an internal XML itself. It is raw XML. There's an inner XML and exter, exter, external XML. But the event data is that now I have all the properties I'm looking for. So I went through all that magic, all that fun stuff, so that I can figure out, hey, there is a computer property inside that event. There is uh, inside system. So it's inside this path, the event, the system, the computer property. Went through all this process just so I can create a variable, right? And it, it then put it into a named value inside of this trigger called uh, value queries. So if I can query the event itself and stick it into a property called named queries, I can then use it inside of the, the event trigger. So this is the part of the magic that you can use to actually inject. So 
quite often you see is that, hey, just trigger, you know, fall off triggers. But now to actually get information inside the event itself, you need to jump through this hoop. So, or I need to jump through this hoop, and then we'll see in a second that, you know, it's all crazy. Um, again, my demo is not going to work, but this could work. Probably work. Yep. Yeah. So, if I run this, it will actually I already did it because I was trying to break it and then build it again. So we're going to delete. So this is the exact same thing we just saw, right? I'm going to run this thing called alert DA on system. I get all the values. And actually, let's just, let's just run it again. So I ran the whole thing, and I created this new task called alert DA. Alert D domain admins. So all the properties we're looking for on in this event, and it's a custom trigger, right? So you don't get all the properties. But actually, let's use get scheduled tasks. Task name, name, alert DA for my list. Again, format list is your friend. But we just saw a bunch of stuff from here. You know what? Let's actually do a variable called task. So now we have a task that we can play with. And it's going to return to you an array of tasks because that's just what it does. So now I have the triggers. You can see this looks familiar. Just what we're looking for, the pattern, and then the actual vari uh, values themselves, the value property, value queries. Meaning that you can do this, and you can do all of this in PowerShell. Sometimes it's really quicker just to do it the other way. But now we have our task. And actually see if the collectors are actually working now. Nope. Nope. My source computers aren't connecting. I don't know why they're not connecting, but they're connecting. So. If it would have connected, I could log into another server as my as my domain admin, which happens to be who am I, Mr. James? So he's you know he's our domain admin for today, um, and it works from that point. So the short of it, and kind of I'm gonna get short on time. Lessons to learn is that XML is your friend is that you can create your own um, components when you're working with the Windows event logs. Everything is a query. Use other resources in order to get you the components you're looking for, whether it be subscribe um, to the events or even suppress the events you don't want. And knowing that, well, just because you can do some events you're looking for, you can actually call scripts and actually run them against it. And so it has been used, and we use it quite often for other things, to kick those things off. Um, Mike told before, as far as the idea that he can synthetically, as the word he uses, is to synthetically generate those events. So I want to do some other stuff. There is, um, actually, I think Palantir, where it is. Now I'm kind of giving it again. But Palantir's article talked about, where are they? The auto runs example. So they even give a sample of doing just this. And their example says, hey, I'm going to run auto runs on a machine in a scheduled task and actually create Windows event log entries. That is what the computer's auto runs is. So it uses the auto runs exe to generate data, stick it into an event, and then collect that event. So that's a good example of what they did. And you kind of use what they have to do what you want from there. So again, community is awesome. And I re realize I point, the reason I also say the community is awesome is because yesterday I'm sitting here going, community is super, super awesome because I'm sitting here, hey, let me show you this, you know, 45 line code that will let me, you know, alert my domain admins when I'm happy to do. And I got Fred who goes, oh, well, I got a module that I wrote for that. And I can do this in effectively one line. Oh my gosh. So if you want to, there you go, Fred Wyman install module called subscriber, and you can do exactly that line that I had in just that. And it is install event subscription, give it the name of the subscription, the actual 
code that you actually want to run with that, and inside of that will give you all the objects. So that name value queries, it happens for you because Fred already wrote the module for it. I'm like, oh, Fred, if only I'd known. But that's where it goes. The point being, in this example, it's, he's using, actually, you know what? I think I can do this, because I think I put it here. Let's see if I can give a sample of it. Git command module subscriber. I think I put it on this computer. Ooh, the mouse. Yep, it's here. So, so now we're gonna use help. Again, PowerShell is your friend. Then subscriber examples. So that's where I got it from. So this example, but what I was running, event subscriber, is that we can come here and go, like, wait, Fred, I only I want custom events. I don't want just this particular one event ID. He goes, well, it's also here. What I'm looking for is XML is your friend. I can generate that XML query, and anything that XML query will do will give me the parts I'm looking for. So I could do, give me all the events that are anything. And so all of the other stuff I could potentially get to, I could just pass in the XML itself. So the XML filter, if I had it back in this machine, I can do the same thing, right? So subscriber name and such. But that's gonna be the gist of my talk in that the community is super, super awesome. And certainly engage with the community. And I say that, back to here. Oh, we're gonna go all the way to the front. No. Yeah, community is super, super awesome. And if you talk to people and you engage with the community, you can find out that, you know, the 12 and a half hours that you did work and you find out, oh, I wrote that and here it is. And so it's fun. Thank you. And uh, don't forget to uh, uh, fill out your survey. And if you have any other questions, you know, I know there's a bunch of people who do a bunch of event log collection and you know the community is there the community is all awesome and they engage with each other and uh thanks so much <laughs>